Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Kung Fu Hustle, released in the year 2004. In a police station, five men have ganged up on the police commissioner for arresting a pretty woman. After beating up the man, they walk out the building with no resistance at all. When they walk outside, they realize that the street is empty and the theater is also closed. The leader of the group realizes something is wrong and tries returning to the police station, but one of the policemen closes the doors as well. Suddenly, they are surrounded by the Axe Gang members from all sides. The men try to call for help, but the leader of the Axe Gang, Brother Sum, tells them that no one will come to help them. The leader of the men makes a run for it, but a member of the gang throws an axe, slicing his leg from his body, after which Brother Sum ruthlessly murders him with an axe. The woman begs Brother Sum to let her go. Sum tells her that he doesn't kill women and then proceeds to blast her with his shotgun. It is then known that in this city, the gangs are unable to work freely without any resistance from the police because of the social unrest and disorder, and that Axe Gang is the most feared gang of them all. Pigsty Alley is a poor colony of houses owned by a middle-aged couple who exploit all of their tenants not only for rent but also for food. The landlord even flirts with the women living in the colony. The people that live in the colony are poor and hardworking. One day, as one of the tenants is bathing, the water suddenly stops in the tap. He calls for the landlady, asking for an explanation. The landlady comes rushing down her stairs and starts cursing the man. She claims that the tenants never pay their rent, so she will be banning water usage for four days a week. She proceeds to curse every other tenant before slapping the complainer to the floor. The landlord and lady are actually retired kung fu masters who have exceptional powers. The landlady returns to her room to realize that her husband has been flirting with the women and spying on them, so she beats him up and throws him out of the window. After some time, Sing and Bone arrive at the pigsty alley, where they enter a barber shop. Sing asks the barber to cut Bone's hair. After doing so, he threatens the barber as to why he cut his hair so well. Bone has been posing as the boss of the axe gang and reveals his deadly axe tattoos to intimidate the barber. Sing takes the barber to the side and asks for some money so that he doesn't incur the wrath of the boss. The barber doesn't comply and simply says that he can't kill him because there are thousands of him. Soon, they are surrounded by the residents of the colony. Sing is not phased and challenges them to a single battle. First, he challenges a woman and allows her the first hit. The woman's punch injures him more than he expected, so he challenges an old man, but he turns out to be fully ripped. He again changes his challenger to a kid, but he too has a fully muscular body. By this time, the barber has already called the landlady, who starts hitting Sing with her sandal. Sing threatens her that he is of the Axe Gang and will call for backup. He then lights up a firecracker and throws it outside the walls of the alley. The Axe Gang members, along with their vice general, upon whom the firecracker had landed, walk inside the alley. Sing quickly blames the landlady for throwing the firecracker at them. But before the vice general can say or do anything, the landlady runs away and hides under her blanket. The vice general turns his attention to the barber, but before he could strike him down, an unknown force punches him all the way into the garbage can. The members quickly rush to him, and he commands them to call for backup as quickly as possible. Soon, the full force of the Axe Gang can be seen, as the whole colony is surrounded by the suited men of the gang, and all the tenants are taken hostage. One of the members pours petrol onto two tenants, and Brother Sum threatens the whole colony to give up the person who had beaten his vice general, or else he will burn them along with the colony. He then throws the lighter towards the woman, but it is intercepted by the coolie of the colony. He reveals that he was the one who beat up the vice general. He is instantly attacked by all the Axe Gang members at once, but he manages to handle almost everything thrown at him with the help of his kung fu. In the chaos, the tailor also reveals himself as a kung fu master and helps the coolie fight off the gang members. The baker as well turns out to be great in kung fu, so much so that he even breaks guns with his staff in kung fu. The three of them together manage to scare off Brother Sum and his gang members. That night, the Axe Gang captures Sing and Bone for posing as Axe Gang members and ruining their reputation. Brother Sum orders for their execution. But before he could be killed, Sing manages to lockpick himself out of his bindings. He does the same for Bone and saves his life. Sing then begs Brother Sum to take them into the Axe Gang because it's his lifelong dream. 
Some then asks him to kill someone if he wants to enter the gang. Later that night, Bone and Singh discuss who they must kill, and Singh tells him that he wants to kill the landlady and all the tenants from Pigsty Alley. Bone tells him that he doesn't even know Kung Fu, so he can never kill them. Singh then reveals his backstory. Back when he was a kid, Singh met a Kung Fu bookseller who told him that he had the perfect face and body for a Kung Fu master, and sold him a copy of the Buddha Palm Technique. Singh had spent his life savings on buying the book from the vendor, the money which he saved to study as a doctor or lawyer. He read the book and practiced every day. However, when he went to save a girl from bullies, he was badly beaten and made fun of for believing that he could ever learn Kung Fu. To add salt to his wounds, the bullies even peed on him. He reveals his sad story because of which he wanted to be a killer. The duo then go to get ice cream, but run away without paying. The owner girl, Fong, runs after them, but they catch a tram and tease her as they run away. The next day, the landlady scolds the three kung fu masters for not telling her about their kung fu and making the mob come after them. She gets into an argument with Rabbit Teeth Jane and all the other tenants of the alley who start shouting at her instead. The landlady suddenly screams so loudly that glass cracks and every other person shuts up. Singh and Bone arrive as well, hoping to kill the landlady. They hide in a corner and Singh tries to throw a knife at her, but it accidentally ricochets back into his own shoulder. He asks Bone to do the job since he's hurt, but he has terrible aim and hits Singh on his other shoulder. For their final knife, Bone moves a bit closer, but while throwing the knife, he sticks the blade into Singh and manages to hit her with the sheath only. After their failed attempt, they try to run, but the landlady notices them. To intimidate her, Bone carries a big box, which happens to have snakes, but all of the snakes fall onto Singh instead. Singh tries to whistle them away, but they bite him right on the lip instead. A chase ensues as the landlady chases Singh all through the highway, but Singh manages to run away from her. The next morning, Bone meets Singh to notice that he has already healed from his wounds. He compliments how Singh always manages to heal very fast. They then notice two blind men carrying a huge bag and mock them. These men are actually kung fu masters hired by the Axe Gang. They accept the offer by Brother Sum to kill the three kung fu masters at Pigsty Alley. That night, the blind kung fu masters arrive at the Pigsty Alley, and one of the masters manages to kill the coolie right away. The other master goes to the tailor and they start battling. The tailor beats up the master, but as they go outside, he's outnumbered by the two of them. The blind masters use a musical instrument to barrage the tailor with weapons of all kinds. The baker comes to the tailor's aid, but even with his best efforts, the both of them are unable to beat the blind men. Just as they're about to get hit by a final blow, the landlady stops them with her loud scream. The landlord suddenly appears in between the blind men and breaks their instrument. He then starts beating them up using their own punches. He uses his power to toss the two men around like flies. The men quickly recompose themselves and mend their instrument to hit the landlord with their best attack. The landlady comes to his rescue and screams so loudly that the two are blown away and their clothes are torn apart. The two men beg for their lives and run away. The landlady then threatens Brother Sum to never mess with her again. The alley mourns the death of the coolie and the tailor. The baker is the only one who lives and thanks them for letting him witness their greatness before he dies. The couple then reveal that they want to be ordinary since their only son died because of Kung Fu. The barber from earlier asks them to train them in Kung Fu, but the landlady refuses as it takes too much time to learn unless you're a born genius. The barber shows them his skills, explaining how he is the one, but he gets beaten up just by one punch. The next day, Singh and Bone notice the ice cream girl, Fong, again, and Singh threatens her for money. They're about to leave after robbing her when the girl shows Singh the candy bar. She turns out to be mute and signals that she knows her. She was the same girl who Singh tried to save from the bullies before he was beaten up back when they were children. Singh throws away the candy bar and runs away. He gets emotional and tells Bone to get away from him. He hands him all the money they stole and sends him back to their village. Just then, he is captured by two Axe gang members. Singh is taken to Brother Sum, who gives him a task to get in the gang once and for all. He is then taken to the mental asylum, where the Axe Gang advisor hands him a map and tells him to go to the last cell and release the man inside it. 
Singh rushes in and despite seeing several signs not to do so, he uses his lockpicking skills to slowly open the iron door. Inside is a middle-aged man, Mr. Beast, who doesn't seem at all interesting. Mr. Beast is brought to the Axe Gang headquarters, where no one believes him to be a great killer. The advisor asks him for a price, but Mr. Beast tells them that he only needs a worthy foe and not money. Brother Sum is still not convinced and asks his men to beat up Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast takes the beating like a champ and takes the gun from the man. He then proceeds to shoot himself, but catches the bullet before it hits him with only two fingers. Amazed and scared, the Axe Gang pays their respect to Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast suddenly walks towards the wall and breaks it with his kick to open a way to the casino where he finds the landlord and lady of Pigsty Alley waiting to deal with the Axe Gang once and for all. An epic battle of kung fu skills quickly begins, but it turns out that Mr. Beast can take all their hits without breaking a sweat. Mr. Beast starts beating them up. Even the full force of the landlady's scream is no match for the Beast who takes it like a champ. The fight continues with the Beast overpowering them. With no choice left, the landlady breaks open the top of the funeral bell and screams through it. Her scream magnified by the bell finally manages to blow the beast away, also shattering the whole house in the process. Mr. Beast finally acknowledges their power and bows down, only to trick them and attempt to shoot them with his lotus pen. He then stabs them and puts them both into a lock. Realizing that the beast is too much of a threat, Brother Sum commands Sing to beat him on his head with a wooden railing. Sing hits Brother Sum instead, before shattering the railing onto the beast's head. In a fit of rage, the beast throws the two masters from his lock and beats Sing into a pulp. He punches the man so hard that his face is planted into the concrete floor. While the beast is distracted, the landlord and lady run away with Sing. Angered that he let them escape, Brother Sum shouts at the beast, but he kills him with a single punch to his face. Back in Pigsty Alley, the landlord and lady manage to save Sing from dying using Chinese medicine and acupuncture. The landlady is amazed that he's recovering so fast. Outside, the beast has surrounded the alley with all the Axe Gang members. Sing recovers and helps the landlord and lady to rest. He then slowly walks out of the room. A final battle ensues between the whole Axe Gang and Sing. He manages to beat them all one by one despite being heavily outnumbered. The landlady and Lord discuss how the Beast unlocked his chi flow and unleashed his true potential. After beating all the gang members, Sing calmly walks to the Beast and punches him out of the building. They have a great battle where it feels like they're perfectly matched for each other. However, soon the Beast shows his true form. He uses the toad-style techniques, which makes him extremely powerful. With one hit, he sends Sing flying to the sky, way above the clouds. There, Sing receives the blessing of Buddha, and remembering the Buddha palm technique, he comes crashing down. He uses the technique, slamming the beast straight to the floor. But before he could kill him, the beast surrenders. The beast tries to trick him and stab Sing, but another attack shocks him. A huge hole appears on the walls beside the beast in the shape of a palm. The beast finally admits defeat and accepts Sing as his master. Some time later, Sing and Bone have now opened a candy shop in the city. Fong appears outside the shop and Sing notices her. The two finally reunite. The movie ends as the kung fu book vendor tries to sell another book to a young girl. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.